he extended Lovell's theorem and polynomials. In the previous video, we have discussed the characterization of constant functions based on Lovell's theorem. Here we consider polynomial functions in relation with the Lovell's theorem. Polynomial functions are of special interest in the theory of complex analytic functions. Polynomial functions are entire functions and they are the only entire functions which are not transcendental. All other entire functions are transcendental functions. One of the important theorems in the theory of polynomial equation is the fundamental theorem of algebra that says that a non-constant polynomial over the field of complex has at least one root. There are a number of proofs of this theorem in literature. One can also find several alternative proofs of this theorem in complex analysis. Here we discuss one proof based on Liouville's theorem. Liouville's theorem says that a function which is analytic and bounded in the whole plane must reduce to a constant. Equivalently, a bounded entire function is constant. An entire function is one which is analytic in whole plane. This also implies that a non-constant entire function is unbounded. We first study the following lemma. Lemma 1. A non-constant polynomial is unbounded. The lemma, in fact, also follows from the Liouville's theorem. By Liouville's theorem, a non-constant entire function is unbounded. Polynomial functions are entire functions. So a non-constant polynomial must be unbounded. An elementary and computational proof is also given in the textbook. We discuss it here. Let this fz a0 plus a1z plus a2z square plus so on up to a n z raised to the power n, where n 1, 2, 3, so on, and a n is not equal to 0. A is are complex coefficients. So this is a non-constant polynomial. Now, if we have n complex numbers, z1, z2 up to z n, then we can write mod of z1 plus z2 plus so on up to plus z n is equal to z1 minus and inside this bracket minus z2 minus z3 minus so on up to minus z n. Now, using the triangle inequality mod z minus w greater than equal to mod z minus mod w, we have this greater than equal to mod z1 minus modulus of minus z2 minus z3 so on up to minus z n. Since mod of minus 1 is 1, therefore we have mod z1 plus z2 plus z n is greater than equal to mod z1 minus modulus of z2 plus z3 plus so on up to z n. Also by that triangle inequality we have mod of z2 plus z3 plus so on up to z n less than equal to mod z2 plus mod z3 plus so on up to plus mod z. If we multiply both sides with minus the sign of the inequality reversed and on get adding mod z1 both sides, we have this inequality 3. So from 2 and 3, we have mod of z1 plus z2 plus z n greater than or equal to mod z1 minus mod z2 minus mod z3 so on up to minus mod z n. Now for for z not equal to 0, we can write mod fz is equal to taking z raised to the power n common. From this expression, we have mod z raised to the power n mod a n plus a n minus 1 over z plus so on up to plus a 1 over z raised to the power n minus 1 plus a naught z raised to the power n. Now using this inequality for we find from 5 that mod fz is greater than or equal to mod z raised to the power n. Now mod of this a n minus mod of a n minus 1 over mod z and this up to minus mod a n naught over mod z raised to the power n. Now when mod z goes to infinity, all these terms goes to 0 and because of this first term we see that mod fz approaches infinity, that is mod fz is not bounded. Now, this is first fundamental theorem of algebra. A known constant polynomial with complex coefficients has at least one root in C. 
let f be a non constant polynomial and suppose fz is not equal to 0 for any z belongs to c that is this polynomial has no root then this function g is equal to 1 over f is analytic in the whole plane that is 1 over f is entire function why? Because f is entire and f is never equal to 0. So g is equal to 1 over f is also entire. Also, f is unbounded and f is never 0. Therefore, g is equal to 1 over f must be bounded in whole plane. In other words, by lemma 1, we have limit z approaches infinity. gz is equal to limit z approaches infinity. 1 over fz, this goes to 0. So by definition, for every epsilon greater than 0, we can find a corresponding capital R greater than 0 such that mod gz is less than epsilon for all mod z greater than R. Also, g is entire and therefore continuous. And continuous functions are bounded on the compact set. So g is bounded on mod z less than or equal to R. So from this mod gz less than epsilon for all mod z greater than r and g is bounded in mod z less than or equal to r we conclude that g is bounded in the whole plane so what we have g is entire and also bounded in the whole plane therefore by lovell's theorem must reduce to a constant this contradicts the fact that f is non constant polynomial hence f must be zero for at least one z belongs to c that is the polynomial has at least one root we now discuss an elementary fact about polynomial in the following exercise which is related with the extended lovell's theorem exercise one let f be a polynomial of degree n then there exists positive constants a and b such that mod fz is less than or equal to a plus b mod z raised to the power n. Now note that for mod z less than or equal to 1, we have mod z raised to the power n less than or equal to 1. Now write this expression mod fz. fz is a naught plus a1z plus so on up to a n z raised to the power n. So by triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to mod a naught plus mod a1 mod z plus so on up to mod a n mod z raised to the power n. Since mod z raised to the power n is less than or equal to 1, mod z is less than or equal to 1, mod z square is less than or equal to 1. So from this, we have this left hand side expression less than or equal to mod a naught plus mod a1 plus so on up to mod a n. Now, if we take this a1 as mod a0 plus mod a1 plus so on up to mod a n. We have mod fz is less than or equal to a1 plus b1 mod z raised to the power n, where b is any non-negative constant. We can also choose here b1 is equal to 0. Now, if mod z is greater than or equal to 1, we have mod z raised to the power n greater than or equal to mod z raised to the power n minus 1 greater than or equal to so on up to mod z. So we have mod fz less than or equal to mod a0 plus mod a1 mod z plus so on up to mod a n z raised to the power n. Now this is less than or equal to we have mod z is less than or equal to mod z raised to the power n. So here we have mod a1 z raised to the power n and so on plus a n mod z raised to the power n and we can write this expression as mod a naught plus mod a1 plus so on up to mod a n and taking this common mod z raised to the power n so from here we see that when mod z is greater than equal to 1 mod fz is less than equal to mod a naught plus mod a1 plus so on up to mod a n mod z raised to the power n. Now let a2 equal mod a0 and b2 equal mod a1 plus on up to mod a n. Then from here we have mod fz is less than or equal to a2 plus b2 mod z raised to the power n. Let a be the bigger of numbers a1, a2 and b be the bigger of number 
numbers b1, b2. Then mod fz is less than equal to a plus b mod z raised to the power n. So this proves that if we have a polynomial, then mod fz is less than equal to a plus b mod z raised to the power n, where n is degree of polynomial. In the next theorem, we will study that the polynomials are the only entire function which satisfies this inequality. That is mod fz is less than or equal to a plus b mod z raised to the power n for some po positive constants a and b. And this is called the extended Liouville's theorem. This states that let f be an, an entire function and let there exist positive constants a and b such that mod fz is less than or equal to a plus b mod z raised to the power n and 0, 1, 2, so on. Then f is a polynomial of degree at most n. The proof follows on using the principle of mathematical induction. We here explain the steps involved in the proof for n is equal to 0, 1, 2. And then it will be easy to graph the proof for all n. Now for n is equal to 0, the theorem reduces to Liouville's theorem. Why? Because when n is 0, mod fz is less than or equal to some positive constant a. So f is bounded and also it is entire. So by Liouville's theorem, it reduces to a constant. So theorem is true for n is equal to 0. Now using this fact, we prove that it is also true for n is equal to 1. For this, we consider this function, gz is equal to fz minus f0 over z minus 0 for z not equal to 0 and f dash 0 when z is equal to 0. Note that fz is analytic, z is also analytic in whole plane. So fz minus f0 over z is analytic except at z is equal to 0. And at z is equal to 0, we take its value as a limiting case. Limit z goes to 0, fz minus f0 over z minus 0, which is f dash 0. Now, the proof of this involves complex integrals. That is to prove that this is entire function, we need the knowledge of complex integral and will be discussed in more detail in some other video. Here we just use the fact that this function g is entire function. Now, the function g is entire and therefore it is also continuous and therefore must be bounded on any compact set. So it is clear that this function g is bounded on mod z less than or equal to 1. Now for mod z greater than 1, we have this mod g z. This equal mod f z minus f0 from here over mod z. Using triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to mod f z plus mod f0 over mod z. Now, for n is equal to 1, mod fz is less than or equal to a plus b mod z. So, this is less than or equal to a plus b mod z plus mod f0, which is then equal to a plus mod f0 over mod z plus b. Now, mod z is strictly greater than 1. Therefore, 1 by mod z is less than 1. So this expression is less than or equal to a plus mod f0 plus b. From this, we see that g is also bounded when mod z is greater than 1. So, but we have g is bounded in the whole plane. And therefore, by Lovell's theorem, must reduce to a constant, say constant k1. So when g z is k1 for all z we have fz minus f0 over z is equal to k1 this implies fz is equal to k1 z plus f0 so from here f is a polynomial of degree at most n is equal to 1 if k1 is 0 then this is a polynomial of degree 0 we now prove the result for n is equal to Two on assuming that the result is true for n is equal to 1. That is, f is entire function and satisfy mode fz is less than or equal to a plus b 
mod z raised to the power 2. Then f is a polynomial of degree at most 2. Now, the function g defined by 6, that is considered this same function g. This we have shown is entire and therefore bounded for mod z less than or equal to 1. This is a compact set. And therefore, mod z is less than or equal to some constant a1. And this is less than or equal to a1 plus b1 mod z. We are writing in this form because we have to use the fact that theorem is true for n is equal to 1. Now, for mod z greater than or equal to 1, we have mod gz less than or equal to mod fz plus mod f0 over mod z. Now, mod fz is less than or equal to a plus b mod z square. Also, mod z is greater than or equal to 1. So, from here, we have a is less than or equal to a mod z and mod f0 is less than or equal to mod f0 mod z. So, this expression is less than or equal to a plus mod f0 in bracket mod z plus b mod z square over mod z. So writing this a plus mod f0 as constant a2 and b as constant b2, we see that mod gz is less than or equal to a2 plus b2 mod z. Now, if we choose a number c which is bigger than a1, a2 and number d which is bigger than b1 b2 then for all z we have mod gz is less than or equal to c plus d mod z so since we are using the fact that result is true for n is equal to 1 so in this case gz is this polynomial k2z plus k3 and on putting value of gz we have fz minus f0 over z minus 0 is equal to k2z plus k 3. From this, fz is equal to k2z square plus k3z plus f0, where k2 and k3 are some complex constant. From this, we see that f is a polynomial of degree at most 2. If k2 is non-zero, degree is 2. If k2 is 0, degree is 1. And if, if k3 is also 0, it is constant polynomial. In this way, we can prove the theorem by induction. The function g defined in 6 is entire that we have proved. And if we assume that mod fz is less than or equal to a plus b mod z raised to the power n, then from this we get mod gz is less than or equal to c plus d mod z raised to the power n minus 1. The argument is same as discussed above for some constant c and d. Now we have assumed that result is true for n minus 1 therefore g is a polynomial of degree at most n minus 1 and from this we see that f is a polynomial of degree at most n.